The problem with Games Workshop is you, today on Attention Span Labs. As I record this video, a revolt is brewing against Games Workshop over their long train of abuses and usurpations. People who are already mad about their shady business practices and planned product shortages are now furious over their crackdown on fan-produced content, including some much-beloved YouTube series. I could talk about this, about how GW's production borders on fiduciary negligence, how their erratic distribution indicates severe organizational dysfunction, how foolish it is to bully and silence their most loyal fans. But I won't. There are over a hundred other videos out there that discuss this subject to death. And if you want to waste your time, you're welcome to watch them instead. Been there, done that. None of this is new. GW has a decades-long history of treating their fans with contempt. And if it recently appeared otherwise, then consider this just a return to form. And the reason why they've gotten away with it for so long is because fans deserve contempt. The word fan is short for fanatic. When the word was coined, it was not intended as a compliment. It took a generation of industrial propagandists, the advertisers and marketers, to convince you otherwise. Businesses prefer fans to customers, you see. Customers are equals, if not the superiors in a business relationship. Fans, on the other hand, are willing, even eager inferiors. They are simps, they are cucks. There's a reason they call the patron porn website only fans. The more a fan is abused, the greater their desire to prove their loyalty and love, a proof paid in money and time. That the fans of the misnamed Warhammer community focus their infatuation on an avaricious corporation instead of a big kitty internet whore places them at the lowest rung of the dank and dirty ladder of fandom. If you're a fan and you're feeling insulted right now, good. Hit that subscribe button and get ready for more abuse, you degenerate. On the other hand, if you feel ashamed of the quasi-sexual arousal you get from being mistreated, if you don't want to piss more of your money and precious life away simping for the least reputable British toy company, then pay attention because I want to help you. I want to help you stop being a fan and start being a man. But first, a flashback. Picture it, Pennsylvania, Christmas of 1992. A nine-year-old boy unwraps a big, heavy, jangly present to reveal the Battle Masters board game. This little boy, me, has played war games with counters before. But this was my first exposure to miniature war gaming, as well as my first exposure to Games Workshop, and it was intoxicating. At first, I was disappointed that the miniatures didn't come painted like on the back of the box. But soon my imagination began to wander, and I realized that this was better. As blank canvases, they could be decorated any way that my imagination desired. Never mind that my artistic knowledge and skills were not adequate to the task. The seed of a great tree was planted in my heart and mind. Battle Masters, like Hero Quest before it, was intended as a sort of gateway drug to GW's other products, and so it came with a pamphlet advertising their glorious miniature armies. One side featured Warhammer Fantasy Battles, the other featured very early Warhammer 40k, not yet into its second edition. This was my first glimpse of power armored space marines. I had never seen anything like them in plastic before. At the bottom was a photo of space marines fighting wood elves, a glimpse into the wild, imaginative, anything-goes nature of Warhammer that was prominent at the time, but has now all but gone extinct. I wanted these games very badly, but we didn't know how to get them. There were no internet shops to order from back then. I was still three years away from my first computer anyway. Warhammer wasn't sold at Walton Books or KB Toys, the usual sources of such games. There were no dedicated game stores nearby, and comic shops just sold comic books back then. By the time I finally got that first PC, I had mostly forgotten about Warhammer and miniature games in general. But in the back of PC Gamer magazine, there was a mail order catalog for a company called Chips and Bits. They offered PC games for sale, but also board games, role playing games, and at last, miniature war games. Eventually, I convinced my mom to order, sight unseen, the Warhammer 40,000 second edition box set. It was $60 or $70, quite a lot at the time, but a bargain compared to today. When I opened it, my mom was not impressed. Who's going to put all that crap together? Not her. And it didn't come painted like on the box. 
and my dad was more receptive. He helped me build some marines and orcs and set up the little cardboard buildings. It was the fluff, however, that really caught our interest. We would read through the Codex Imperialis, one of three books that came with the box set, and talk about how awesome the imagery was and how over-the-top funny the setting was. There were the great, memorable quotes from Inquisitor Chavak and the Tyrant of Badab, whoever the hell they were, and the hysterical saga of Grishnak at the bridge. When I read that the Emperor shed a tiny tear for each one of his countless soldiers who died in battle, a passage of still indescribable emotional weight and evocative power, Warhammer 40,000 secured his place atop the mist-shrouded summit of my preteen imagination. My dad bought me several more sets through mail order. I remember the first order was a Predator tank and an Orc war buggy. Not long after, some local stores started carrying the game, hopeful of finding a new source of income after the comic bubble collapse. From these shops, I purchased many more sets of miniatures, and Codex Ultramarines, the Dark Millennium box set, Necromunda, 2nd edition Space Hulk, and Epic 40,000. For my 14th birthday, I received a Reaver Titan from Armorcast. My first website, handwritten in HTML on GeoCities, centered around 40k and my custom army lists. I co-ran a very successful 40k play-by-email RPG. And, and, and... You get the idea. This was more than two decades ago. I played on and off through high school and again at college through third and fourth edition and then skipped all the other ones until eighth. My parents had spent hundreds of dollars on miniatures, paints, and books. And then when I had my own income, I spent thousands more. Like too many war gamers, I bought miniatures that I knew I would never get around to assembling, let alone painting. I was a fan in the worst sense of the word. My first falling out with Games Workshop started in the run-up to the as-yet-unannounced 3rd edition of 40k. Everyone was upset about yet another price increase. A box of 10 metal space marines for $40? They're already unaffordable at $35! Outrageous! <laughs> Note well that price hikes have been a trend with GW since before I ever started to play. Games Workshop is the only miniatures company whose prices never go down no matter what kind of improvements they make to manufacturing, distribution, materials, or economy of scale. We were also upset about delayed codexes and draconian rules forbidding non-Citadel minis, or even out-of-production Citadel minis, at GW stores and official events. <laughs> Again, the stuff you're complaining about today did not start happening last year. Around 1997 or 1998, a GW staffer leaked an internal email from corporate, telling them to ignore all the grognards whining about price increases. Forget the old fans, they said. They're not the future. The real money was in younger kids who had access to the fat wallets of their parents. Those kids don't complain about how expensive something is because they're not spending their own money. Now I'm paraphrasing since my copy of the email did not survive the ensuing 20 plus years. But you can take my word that I've accurately relayed the gist of it. Now this email also said something even more interesting. That all the whining was a bluff. If people are complaining about something, that means they're invested in it. And if they came back after every other time we raised prices, imposed stupid tournament rules, squatted armies, and all the rest, they're not going to leave now. They're junkies. Were they wrong? Of course not. They had you guys pegged from the start. Now, if you uh, like getting pegged, then go live your best life. You can tune out now because the rest of this video isn't for you. You sissy. You fairy. You company man. Alright, if you're still here, I assume you want to know how you can stop being a fan. Especially since your fandom brings you less and less joy as it ages. The answer is simple. Walk away. Stop giving money to people who hate you. Not less money, no money. If you need some miniature methadone to kick that GW heroin habit, so be it. There are plenty of options that I talked about on this channel already. Conflict 47, Bolt Action, Stargrunt, Frostgrave, Stargrave. I will add to this list Battletech, Infinity, Malifaux, Kings of War, Tanks, Team Yankee, Flames of War, or Lords of Erewhon. Beyond the Gates of Antares, Afterlife, Alternate Armies, Ion Age, Starside, Maelstrom's Edge, and a legion of others. 
There are hundreds, if not thousands, of other miniature and game companies out there. And Games Workshop is far from the best of them. And I'll let you in on another secret. You can keep playing old editions of Warhammer with your existing miniatures. That's right. No secret police are going to kick down your door and chain you at the bottom of an open latrine in Nottingham. The old rules and the old miniatures are better anyway. Remember, this is a gargoyle. This is an abomination. You must also stop promoting them. Give them no time, no attention, no publicity. Act as if Games Workshop went bankrupt and closed its doors 20 years ago. Hashtag brand zero. Note that I did not say bitch about it all day on Twitter. I did not say make one new Warhammer ad video every day, thinly disguised as a criticism. And I definitely did not say you should whine about them stopping you from making a free 30 minute animated commercial. By all means, warn your friends away from them. Tell your local game store that you won't buy their crap and follow up on it. Tell Games Workshop that you are not buying their stuff and produce receipts by canceling your subscription to White Dwarf or Warhammer Plus. But otherwise, let not their unhallowed name pass your lips and let your actions speak louder than your words. There's an old adage that the only bad publicity is no publicity. Believe it. By pumping out non-stop videos about the latest GW outrage, all you're doing is bringing them to the attention of normie bugmen that would otherwise be ignorant of them. And those same soulless weirdos, drooling out of the corners of their permanently gaped mouth, will tune out your criticisms and hurl their wallets in the direction of the nearest Warhammer store. Perversely, your incessant attacks may even encourage some degenerate fanboys to spend more time and money just to spite you. Discontent can be weathered, Hatred can be monetized, but indifference kills. You must also abandon the false hope that your sincere, well-articulated criticisms will cause Games Workshop to have a change of heart. The corporate mandarins have their plans, and you do not factor into them. Strangely enough, miniature wargaming may not even factor into them. Like many other infiltrated brands, including DC, Marvel, and Dungeons & Dragons, they seem to be pivoting away from their core business toward a digital media and lifestyle brand peddling to normies. Their idealized future involves a lot fewer models and a lot more t-shirts, freemium mobile games, streaming reality series, chibi space marine plushies, and uh, dark Eldar body pillows. And no, it doesn't matter that you smelly dice throwers are probably right that this is a mistake. As long as easy money is fueling their stock prices, as long as some galaxy brain MBA assures them that it's better to leave demand unsatisfied because hype is better than revenue, they're going to keep chugging down the road until the bubble pops. Most big companies do the same thing in times of economic derangement. GW's decisions are going to be even worse because Warhammer is pretty deep into what David Stewart calls the corporate IP death cycle. The zany, satirical, over-the-top grimdark that made them a niche success is being sanitized, simplified, and dumbed down to appeal to the much larger audience of normies. And not to put too fine a point on this, but normies don't build and paint toy soldiers. More importantly, when you stop wasting your time shouting at the wall, you can spend it on things you actually like. You may find a new game to love, a treasure that your all-consuming fandom has blinded you to. Now, as for me, I will strive to never mention Games Workshop in a video again. I will not promote their products, even in the negative. I will probably continue to show pictures of my Warhammer minis because these are the work of my skill and my imagination. I will talk about my own custom armies and the lore like everybody did back in the 1990s when the game was still fun. I may even present a battle report or two, but I will only be using rules and miniatures that I already own ones I 3D print, and ones produced by other manufacturers. I haven't given GW a penny in three years, and so help me, I never will again. You have the power to do likewise. Or you can continue to be a cuck, a simp, a fan. But if that's your choice, then take your abuse in silence. And now I've said everything I have to say. Except one more thing. Death to the false emperor. Jesus Christ lives and reigns forever.